times are crazy. Life is crazy. Trying to find a night to go streaming. Yes, Sunday night is the new hell of ass live night. At least this week it is. Ooh. Audio is crazy. Got that fixed. What's up, everybody? Um, I got a whole bunch of tackle to show you guys, so that's the main thing. Yeah, cold, rainy day in Minnesota. What is up? What is up? I got the boat out yesterday, Michael. So spent a lot of that time yesterday getting ready yesterday. So the boat is operational. After a six-month hiatus, the Camus hit the water again, thankfully. So that was cool. Hopefully the Hawkeye fans are, are doing okay after their, their dreams were dashed. <clears throat> they ran into the juggernaut that was the South Carolina Lady Gamecocks. It was warm here yesterday, but windy. Today, cold and rainy. But we need the rain, so we'll deal with it. <clears throat> Been sick all day, Dustin. How are you going to get to the juice factory tomorrow if you're sick? Dexter. <clears throat> Nick, you doing all right? We need more rain. Uh, so the first fish of this season fell for a uh, mini tiny micro chatterbait fishing for crappies. It was not on live scope. I did try to live scope some crappies. I saw quite a few panfish hanging off breaks in like 8 to 12 feet of water <clears throat> but I could not get them to eat my little artificial kind of like 2 inch boot tail swim bait on a tiny little crappie head <clears throat> last year I went out there in the spring and wailed on them so to get some reps you know following my little jig and some little jerk baits and things like that but no fish no fish were harmed on front facing sonar yesterday <clears throat> Play. Yes, yeah, so we got a bunch of tackle. Thought we'd talk about some stuff. Tonight's Sunday night Hell of Ass Live brought to you, presented by Arsenal Fishing, boosted by Powerhouse Lithium. <clears throat> so that's that's what's going on. So the members saw a little sneak peek of the logo that I'm working on for some merch. So that might be coming sooner than later. Uh, no, Tyler, Minnesota bass opener is not like until Mother's Day where you can legally target them except for border waters. Nate got his first three pounder under the boat on a swim jig. Nice. So, yeah, working with Dan over at Arsenal Fishing. Get that logo. Hopefully we'll be rolling that out soon. I would like to go to Big Stone. I just don't know. It's not in the cards. I literally have... Uh, the reason we're streaming on Sunday night is because I traveled all last week for work, um, had stuff going on this weekend, and I have literally sports with my kids every night this week, and we travel to Chicago next week for a soccer tournament. <sighs> yeah. Hopefully Minnesota gets on the, the train that, uh, was it, three, four years ago, Wisconsin went to that catch and release? It's true. I got all the best electronics, all the best wiring, all the best batteries, and I still can't. I mean, I can see the crappies. I just can't make them bite. But let's be honest. I'm not that great with my live scope. They could have just been bluegills. Look at that. B. McFishing. Three pounds smally on a buzz bait. Hmm. I am not going to dart now. No. Yes. I think I did show a little, like, <clears throat> held it up the screen on Main's channel. Um, I'm pretending to stream on TikTok with my phone, so I can't show you. Maybe later, once nobody's watching on TikTok, I'll uh, <clears throat> show it off on my phone here. So that's coming, hopefully soon. What else is new? I mean, there's been some things going on in, in fishing since we last went live. Tyler says in Wisconsin, the small is eating the 110. There you go. 
Water temps on the Little Lake by my house were like 43 to 47 main lake. And then when you got up in the bays, you could find 50 degree water, but that was just surface temp. <laughs> so, yeah. Otherwise, I got all these boxes here we can crack into. Some new stuff here. <clears throat> got an envelope here. We can talk about FBD. We can talk about Brian New. I don't know. All those things. <laughs> well, so uh, Nick says he's not super impressed with Brian New. Yeah, it was a little, I don't know. You hear kind of a D move for sure. Was it reason for disqualification? Not sure. Maybe, obviously it was. It was upheld. Um, yeah, kind of an odd thing. <clears throat> I did see that uh, <clears throat> Slick Johnson, the Alabama Bash Council, said the rumors he's hearing is, what, 60 inches of screen and one transducer, one front-facing transducer for 2025. Um, I'd like to see 50 inches. I think 60 is like <clears throat> way too much. Honestly, 512s. I don't think anybody has to really get creative with 512s. Um, I think you can just, <laughs> it's not much different than what people are running now. <clears throat> I like to see it around 50, see people make some choices. <clears throat> um, I think it'll help the optics. I think it'll help what it, you know, what, what a tournament rig boat should look like, keeping the price down. But I don't think it, it's not going to stop the Drew Gills of the world. Like, Drew Gill only has one front-facing unit as it is. So, yeah, I would say that three sides of the story, right? What really happened, the other two sides, for sure. That's a, that's, that's a good way to put it, B. McFishing. Yeah, Watson coming up on LBL here soon. That should be interesting. I will not be doing eclipse fishing. I think inches, like if it's a nine inch graph, that's a nine inches of screen. So with 60 inches, you can have five 12 inch screens. AJ might be something from AJ in this pile. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not going to change much. Um, I mean, yeah, the MPT guys, they might want to come up with something else because a 22-inch MPT is not going to be effective, I don't think, when they do that. <clears throat> the Agram, Kraken Skulls, 48 Degrees, Michigan, Smallmouth. I saw a clip of the LVS 36. I'm pretty sure that's like a fake thing. I don't think that's real. Yeah, maybe some of the pros will be offloading some of those electronics. There you go. Hmm. Nick said he heard something about maybe new. It's more than just one of that event. Just that incident. Huh? Could be any of those boxes. <clears throat> yeah, 360 Live is probably in the works for sure. <clears throat> so I got a little envelope from my uh, my wife's uncle, Godfather. He sent me some of his favorite baits that he's always caught fish on so i thought this was kind of cool um he fishes a lot of like elephant butte like new mexico west he lives in el paso so he sent me these keeper custom worms in john's special mainly a drop shot worm for him uh John's special is kind of like a uh, green pumpkin party or green pumpkin candy with a chartreuse tail. And it's got, it is, does have a little bit of laminate to it. It's hard to see on this camera here, but there is an ever so like a kind of a light water, light watermelon or that green pumpkin. So there is, 
multiple. But I can see just a little little flat Reaper style worm. So I'll have to throw these in the boat. Give them a try since Uncle John sent them. One of his favorite worms. Hand poured, made in the USA, super soft. Keeper custom worms at yahoo.com. This one's called the Fat Mini. Oh, actually, the color is not John special. The color is green, weenie, red, and green fleck chartreuse tail. There you go. Clay says the drop shot debuted at Elephant Butte 97. You're saying that's the first time it was like shown or written about in a uh, Bassmaster article, maybe. And then he sent me some of the... I've actually got some of these dry creek tubes. Um, and these are in Old Ugly, which is kind of like a, a do-nothing green pumpkin looking... Wasn't much scent on the Keeper Worms, Keeper Customs. These ones just smell like plastic. But they're just kind of a, a pale green pumpkin, not a lot of fleck in them. Almost just green without the pumpkin. So, I don't know. These ones, I think you can still get. <clears throat> Murtaugh, Idaho, Dry Keek Outfitters. I've got some of these hanging next to the KMS in the garage. So, thanks. Shout out to Uncle John for sending me some worms. There's that. First time on TV. There you go. All right. Let's see, we've got a couple boxes here. So let's maybe start with this one. This is a lot that I bought off Facebook. I've been kind of MIA on the old uh, whatnot. I haven't really found the interest or the time. So I don't know when my next whatnot will be. Maybe I might do a whatnot from the Saturday night from the soccer hotel next week. But I got this whole box shipped to me for like 55 bucks. So it's got... Uh, a bill dance. So Jimmy Houston, what is this? The uh, was a fingerling or guppy or something like that. <clears throat> kind of a cool color. So it's got a uh, old school, smaller quarter ounce rip and wrap or rattle, rattle and rattle and wrap. Actually, one of the biggest small eyes I ever caught in my life when I was a kid was on, it might have been the bigger version of this, but was this color, the shad color on Rainy River. <clears throat> Pretty slow on whatnot. Sure. Got a couple bandits. <clears throat> I think these are newer ones. Dustin. Let's see, we have a, a, a bandit expert. That one, I mean, I guess they do have the Excalibur. Never mind. These do have the uh, triple grips on them. So both, these ones are <clears throat> a little bit older. Triple grip. It's the next ones that are. <laughs> These ones <clears throat> all appear to be the newer. Um, that's a newer bandit, I think. And then <clears throat> all two hundreds, and then a white one. You can see that one's got the tiny eyes, triple grips, two little bumps on the belly. And then a couple of black 200s. <clears throat> so the black 200s also have the smallish eyes, triple grips. Kind of <clears throat> not the greatest paint jobs on the lips. So some decent bandits. What else we got? Little Cordell. <clears throat> we tried TikTok. Nobody's really watching on TikTok. I guess there's one person. Um, and then a couple of uh, quarter ounce rattle traps. I always like this color. This color always produced for me really well up in northern Minnesota. I think we have perch. And then kind of a... Ooh. So this person likes smaller lipless. These are all like quarter ounce. Um, but I'm not sure if this one's the... What is this? The, the Pico or the... What is the Booyah Boogie or the, the Pico? I'm not sure. I don't know which one this one is. I'm not sure what the difference is. First time I ever had one of these. TikTok is how you knew I went live. Awesome. 
Tyler. This is the Pico. Okay. And then otherwise, I got a bunch of uh, kind of the fat wraps, the silent ones. And they're a combination of uh, Finland and Ireland. I know a lot of people still like these. Chad, and then I got a handful of the kind of this. Hello. Here's an Ireland one. This one's the, of all the ones I got. This Ireland one's got the most teeth marks on it. <clears throat> you see this color a lot in the Husky Jerk. I don't. I think it's you don't see it as much in their cranks, but so yeah, not bad for. Then I got a box, so I don't know. I could add to my Bandit show <clears throat> with that box. <clears throat> All right. Burr, burr, burr. Otherwise, we have three. Oh, well, this one. So here is a. Uh, I fell off the whatnot wagon. <clears throat> uh, it wasn't in Lakeville, Brian. I actually had it shipped from Iowa. I think they shipped it from. I had to. They said they wouldn't ship it, but I convinced them that I sent them a pre-printed pre label that they could just tape on. So that did it. I want to say it was from Des Moines or Cedar Rapids. No, Storm Lake, Iowa, maybe? So I had been really good about not going on whatnot. And then I went on for somebody's stream, and uh, I don't even remember what I all bought. We're going to find out together. All right. So I brought some, we got a couple of rogues. Can't tell how old they are. I feel like they might be floating rogues. They feel pretty light. What else did you buy? I bought this Mystic Minnow floater. Jointed. I hadn't really seen a jointed Mystic Minnow before. Excalibur hooks on it. <clears throat> I don't know. Okay. What else did I get? Looks like I maybe got a Norman. Is that a deep little N? AJ? Deep little N? Kind of a decent looking color. That probably would make a good wake bait. Not the Norman, but the uh, the Mystic. <clears throat> Whoa. What's this? Oh, what's this? Is Tyler still here? What is this? What's that? Ooh. Wart down. It's actually got a really legible wiggle wart on the bottom of it. Might see more wiggle warts tonight. Stay tuned if you're a wiggle wart fan. What's this one? Looks like another bandit. Chris Ross, the wind does the wind was gassing yesterday up here. That is for sure. Well, that one's about that one, Dustin. Triple grips. Little bumps on the bottom. The good color, Dustin. Oh, if you're a fan of pre-wrap warts, stay tuned. Oh, man. Is it bad that I don't remember buying any of these? <clears throat> Tennessee Shad. Oh, here's another bandit. I am a sucker for a chartreuse in blue. See the triple grips on that bad boy? Beady little eyes. <clears throat> so evidently about a rebel crankbait. <clears throat> Oh, 
Not sure what that chartreuse in blue. Crank R, the deep crank R. Chris got a few down in Iowa. Hmm. Curly weed pond weed already. We barely had all the vegetation we have is from last year. <clears throat> all right, what else? We have a uh don't even did I win this? I don't remember buying this. A model A. Not particularly old. I'm thinking maybe this was a Gibby that I won. I'm not sure. Oh my gosh, there's more than one layer to this box. All right, we got a Super Spook Junior with Excalibur hooks. It's got a good sound to it. All right, a couple of uh, 2.5s. Another bomber Model A. Why was I bidding on these bombers? I don't even know. They must have been cheap. It's a pretty looking wrist still wrap, though. Look at that. That is a good looking parrot wrist still wrap there. Gosh. Couple of uh, smaller pop bars. They're not screw tails. No, they're newer ones. Although I may have a screw tail to show you in a little bit, Dustin. Stay tuned. There is another bandit. I think I started buying the bandits and then I just started bidding on other stuff to get my shipping down, I think. Oh, Travis, <laughs> this stuff I, uh, I did. Oh, here, let's go. We'll rewind Travis. He'll appreciate this. I actually kind of thought of that one when I bought that one, Travis. <clears throat> Jig Squad, Cuda. All right, and then we have a couple of Cordell spots and maybe a baby. Oh, I think these are all Cordell spots. Man, Cordell's, they have a sound to them, that's for sure. It's like, ooh, one of them's a suspending. I don't know. I definitely, when I fall off the whatnot wagon, I fall off. Here's another bandit. We definitely could do a heck of an all bandit show. So I got quite a bit. A lot, a lot of two hundos. I'm not so sure. Well, this one's a little chewed up. I'm not so sure the uh, vintage of this one. This does not have the original. These hooks have seen better days, tell you that. I don't think it's particular. This one has been ground on some rocks and chewed up. This one, I think, is a certified catcher. Might just have to keep that one. I've never thrown a squeaky dolphin, Travis. I did see that the Tekel has some on uh, the hookup. Oh, but, oh my gosh, there's a third layer. <laughs> Things got out of hand. Here's a, a Rapala down deep. I want to say these were like, what? Mid, mid to late 90s? I think it was last Sunday afternoon. Oh, what's this? What do we got here? Yeah, there's a shiny chrome wiggle wart. It's got a good rattle in it. I didn't really test the rattle on this other chartreuse one. 
That's got a good rattle in it. There's two OG warts. Little KVD 1.0, I think. Guess I was really excited about that free shipping. A couple of more 2.5s. Sexy Shad and Star True Sexy Shad. Good lord. Three rattle traps and some random lipless crankbaits. Looks like that's three, one half ounce, two quarters, and then another random. Four more lipless, three rattle traps, and one off random. It looks like. <laughs> oh, what do we got here? Another spook. This is that old school one with the. I think I finally hit the bottom of this. I think those are the only 2.5 KVDs that I have. Here's an old, uh, I don't know, I forget what they called this pattern. It's an old school one. Got some dandy hooks on it, though. All right. Oof. We went heavy. We'll keep those wiggle warts out. We gotta get those banded from some other boxes eventually. I don't know what I was thinking. <clears throat> Man, that was something. Eesh. All right. Duncan, Luke Duncan. I saw your little love note you got today on Instagram. That was that was quite a strange letter. You're talking about that's the one you can modify and make three hooks? All right. Ba, 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 ba. Cool. Well, so now we got two boxes left here. These ones are a little bit less. I, actually, these this these got the juice. It can be a little clowny out there at times, Luke. All right. I'm gonna open these in about one minute. Let's uh we'll, we'll let you guys pick which one you want to see first. We'll do a quick little poll here for the, the YouTubers. All right, we're going to run this poll. We'll come back in one minute, and we will see what the audience chooses on which box we open. Are you ready to reel in your next home purchase or refinance? Supreme Lending's Dream Team can help guide you through the entire mortgage process, from pre-qualification to closing. We have a wide variety of home loan programs in our tackle box, including down payment assistance and first-time homebuyer options. You can ask Hella Bass. He trusted us to help finance his home. Contact the Dream Team today by searching Supreme Lending Dream Team or click the link below in the description or scan the QR code on your screen. All right, cheers to the Dream Team. We are back on this Sunday night. If you guys need any help with any uh, refinance or getting a new property, Luke, if you need to, to move so the stalkers don't know where you live, my guy Aaron can help you out. Uh, Travis, I refied uh, a handful of years back. But I know several of my fishing buddies that have uh, 
purchased with the Dream Team. But uh, I didn't know Aaron at the time that I bought this house. Otherwise, I would have. All uh, right. So, what does the uh, what does it say? What does the uh, the poll say here? Fifty two percent unmarked box. <clears throat> this one has got more stuff in it, and it's not actually a box from Omnia. Well, not the last shipment. All right. The person that sent me said, "Be careful when I open this." So, uh, so don't go heavy with the the Arsenal scissors. This box comes from uh, Mobile, Alabama. I was using our Arsenal scissors to delicately, surgically open this. Yeah, good reminder from uh, Brian. Doesn't hurt to uh, hit the like button. Costs you nothing. You can do it on Facebook. You can do it on YouTube. Uh, Kevin KK Customs on Instagram. What's up? All right, what do we got here? We got a new sticker. It might be a hint. And what's in this box? You want to change your vote now, AJ? Maybe it never hurts to call, Gravy. It never hurts to call. All right. Specimen number one is this little, uh, can't see it in the bag. It's a little square bill, little Marty Burns square bill. I believe this is supposed to be in the vein of 1.5. Remind me if I'm wrong, but I think just a classic a square bill in color there. Juicy juice. I think it's a 1.5 and a 2.5. You knew it. And then, uh, I suppose we could hold these up side by side here. I'll stay sitting on my keyboard here. Yeah, so there they are. Two point five, one point five. Oh, look at that! We got the triple dotted eyes on these bad boys. Look at that! Triple dotted eyes. What's up, Bateman? Hope you're enjoying work tonight. Yeah, the Arsenal scissors are no joke. That is correct, Lucas. Uh, the football jigs. We've given away some football jigs on this stream in the past. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, got, got, got a set of these to add to my uh, Bolsa Big M TK addiction. <clears throat> and then I had to get a little bit of a... Oh, wait. That's right. I forgot because I had sent some other things. I actually have. So I don't know if you guys heard the story on this, but uh, so when we have to pick our own custom colors at Christmas, I went with on the uh, the uh, the MP and the Nitwit. <clears throat> I went with uh, Bleeding Olive Shiner. Kind of a, a, a reenactment of the Rapala color here, uh, but I didn't get any uh, any chin red. So, and I had another version of this on one of the other baits I did on one of the uh, forget the, the one I lost. But uh, so I sent these back in to get some some red added to the chins. So because I had done that, there's actually another drop that I told them to hold on to. Um, so I think I've paid shipping now on twice and only got so this was the other is it bad that I can't remember what's what anymore
Here was another set of square bills that TK did. It's also a 1.5. Or is that more of a 2.5? Man. <laughs> what trebles do you put on these? I would say most of these square bills are going to get, what, a number four, probably? <laughs> I need to convince him to replace all his guides on his Powell's Live on YouTube. Fours, yeah, I would say it's four. What was this one? I don't remember what these were. That's a problem. <clears throat> remember when we convinced him to write the names on the bottom and now he didn't do that anymore? Where's Marty when you need him to help us figure that out? All right. And I guess since in the last drop, I actually decided uh, I was going to order myself a t-shirt. I got one of the United We Glide shirts. We're getting close to swim boat, swim bait season here, so uh, we need to get Amy printing some more t-shirts, so... <laughs> You can get yourself a United We Glide t-shirt at TackleCraft.com. What's up, Harvey? I have never thrown a tater hog uh, square bill. Maybe somebody else in the chat has. So, yeah, we got uh, some touch-ups. And then we got a couple sets of square bills from TK. Hand carved by Marty Burns and a sticker. So if you get uh, four custom cranks and a t-shirt, you get a free sticker. It's a pretty good deal. Yeah, the, I, I like this. You know, this uh, gets warmed up a little bit. We get that glide rolling. Maybe you'll see this on a future uh, video. Get the swim bait going. What's up, Mike M? All right, we have one more box. And the pole. So this did not come from Omnia. At least this time. It originally came from Omnia, probably. This one comes from Nebraska. So this is a little project. This is a sneak peek. I should maybe wait until I actually come out with a video on this one. Who makes this box? This PDS container division? This is a looks like a stock box that they just put the uh, the Omnia logo on. 32 ECT. I could I could probably get you a contact, Matt, if you wanted to make a house call. Uh, rock crawler bite is finally higher in Kentucky. Took long enough. Spill the juice now. All right. So this is kind of related to rock crawlers. So it's a little project here. We've got this video mostly recorded. I've actually got the thumbnail done for it, but I'm just kind of waiting to finish it here. So you may have remembered that I had a bunch of um, uh, wiggle warts that weren't in the best shape. They were kind of old beat up ones. So I kept quite a few wiggle warts, but then if you look down here, I've got this big pile of split rings and hooks. So I did the dirty work. Took all these hooks and split rings off. And I thought, you know, who does a really good job on craw patterns? And who would I want to spice up some of these old, obnoxious, colored jerk baits that uh, are uh, wiggle warts that I wasn't going to otherwise probably fish? So there's there's your first hint. That'll probably go on my wiggle wart box now. We'll just, since we'll have some fresh juice, we'll just, we'll throw that right along with some other horseshoe. Uh, 
customs. Look at this fresh little horseshoe tackle card. Hey, learn all about all the socials for AJ and all the places you can find uh, AJ. What did we get? So here's the lone clear build one. And the Nebraska craw. And uh, we preserved, it's kind of faint and hard to see, but the, is, the old wiggle wart stamp is on that one. Would you guys throw that one where you live? Reels Custom Art on uh, Instagram says, Horseshoe does amazing work. Fellow Nebraskan. So, yeah. That is uh, the juice. But I did have a uh, a really funky screw tail, Dustin, that I had bought off whatnot that needed a little... Uh, a little refresh. How about that? Is that a good looking bomber screw tail? Eyes are a little small, but other than that. Just got real dull. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, these are these are all pre wraps. So I did. Uh, so this is so I got and a couple more here. So that was that one that was the clear bill, but then the rest of them had the uh, solid bills. So we uh, we preserved the Wigglewort stamp just in case anybody wasn't sure, and you know. But uh, there's another Nebraska crowd. And I really like the Nebraska crowd because I feel like. It's a good looking craw, but where we live, this can definitely look like a bluegill as well. And I don't feel like my ring light is doing the best here of like really uh try the old uh we'll get some videos of these. I'm gonna make the video here. Um so I actually got a chunk of them. Like I had several painted in that color. And then uh, we decided to get some made in a super bug color. <clears throat> With the chartreuse. Again, preserving the authenticity of the wiggle wart. Try this one out on the uh... yeah, Clay. They almost look ghost, even though they aren't. AJ does a good job getting depth with his crawl lines, giving you the uh... and then. This is the other color we did. Forget what this one's called, AJ. Refresh my uh, memory. You said this was kind of your most popular rock color color that you get most bourbon barrel, maybe or something. So we did, and I think that kind of works on this. So this was one of those bright orange uh, wiggle warts, and so having that little orange stripe of wiggle wart on the bottom is kind of like a that'll be good. Ozark craw. All right. So yeah, there's the there's the Ozark craw. <laughs> so otherwise, there's just a bunch of them. So there's just. I think I got about one third, one third, one third. <clears throat> so AJ did an awesome job on these. I'll get some videos and picture these posted up in better lighting. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm much more excited to throw these in the old colors that I once had. <clears throat> So, and you guys, if you want to get some of those patterns done, you can go to Horseshoe, what is it, Horseshoe Tackle, Horseshoe Cut, I forget, I always forget, AJ. HorseshoeTackle.com. So, shout out to AJ for doing a connect. For the record, I paid for these. <laughs> these were not given. Uh, so this is not a paid promotion. This is just uh, me getting a bunch of warts done. <clears throat> and uh, so, if you're watching, if you're listening, unfortunately, on the uh, you know the podcast version, you definitely want to pop over to see some of these. So, um, so here's a. <clears throat> right this is one of the colors here in the uh <clears throat> chartreuse tail that's one of the colors i had done in the wiggle wart uh <clears throat> there's another one of the colors the nebraska craw and then the uh ozark craw so those are the three colors that i had kind of split <clears throat> so i did these on these repaints on these old wiggle warts uh jeremy if you just got here so look up AJ Horseshoe Custom Tackle. If you're interested, he's got rock crawlers and other baits stock and a whole bunch of things. Or you can send in, uh, look at that. It's got uh, custom Rapala DT6s on, uh, on sale. So I'll drop a link. Anybody wants to click the link. Thanks, AJ, for doing an awesome job. But uh, there you go. And tune in. You'll get to see the video of, like, the actual baits that I've sent in and then see what they they look like. So I think, uh, Jeremy, you were asking what we were talking about. I just had a bunch of uh, OG warts given a fresh... Fresh paint on them. So awesome job, AJ. Let's put back away. <clears throat> and the old uh, bomber screw tail. So I don't know. I might, I might, uh, I don't know. Maybe one of these will become a giveaway at some point, or maybe I'll put one up just on whatnot, just for, for giggle, just to give somebody else a chance at one. But uh, for the most part, I'm keeping these to fish. <clears throat> you never noticed the lunker punker on the big screen? <laughs> this is a wood punker. I think that's a maybe a niner. Seven inch, sorry, seven inch. It's what you tell the missus is a nine inch, but it's a seven inch. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe if I ever went out west or somewhere, maybe I went to Mexico or something, I'd fish the punker, but I don't really see the need to throw the punker <clears throat> in Minnesota. payback it all comes full circle aj it all comes full circle so yeah they uh the the uh, wiggle war box got a got a recharge pretty excited yeah well i got like almost 10 or a dozen of them now dustin so we got backups <clears throat> brown fish could get a giant ski that's true but i don't really fish for skis i catch them on bass stuff <clears throat> so oh 
what else is going on? I kind of talked about all the things. We'll open up for good of the order. Anything else people want to talk about? <laughs> Real customer came over from Instagram to talk to AJ. But otherwise, yeah, I think since we last talked, I don't know that. Uh, I think I had just come home from the classic. Had shown off my uh, my new lid, which I haven't converted yet. But uh, since then, James Watson has gotten the uh, <clears throat> the band hammer from MLF for what like twenty one months. So I'm pretty sure Watson was thinking he was going to get kicked off the BPT. I don't think he anticipated uh, Boyd dropping the uh you know the ban all the way down to the toyotas and the uh bfl so i think <laughs> well played by boyd <clears throat> hitting watson where it really hurts because he knew he probably wasn't going to recall i mean most certainly wasn't going to requalify wasn't going to be back and uh so well played by boyd i think that was a quite the counter strike by boyd on that end i mean you can't really i mean i'm not a boy ducket fan <clears throat> uh but i can't really blame them right if some if there was an angler doing that on bassmaster or any other angler the leagues would respond in a similar fashion so watson really gave him no choice i mean on the other hand watson was the only one really speaking out <laughs> on all the, the goofy stuff that was happening at the bpt so <clears throat> yeah it is what it is uh it came to a halt I'm sure we'll see uh, James pop up some other places. <clears throat> MPFL, maybe try the Opens. I don't know. Uh, I need to actually get off here and record a fancy fishing video tonight. So we probably won't go too long, and I'll probably record that and get it out tomorrow, Clay. <clears throat> um, any upgrades on the boat for this year? Uh, I, I have a, uh, a Russell Marine Raptor light that I need to install that I bought. And I'm thinking about upgrading my Garmin to a 12 inch from a 10, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I think if it didn't look so much like a boy Ducket hat, like Ducket Rod's hat, he probably could have played a little more plausible deniability, but <clears throat> that was probably going a little bit too over the line. I did have one person comment on my Facebook video or picture of that hat. And he said, that hat is trash. And then I looked and he was on the uh, Ducket Pro Staff. Is it tomorrow night? The uh, the Duncan? Yeah, I'll probably tune into that. Yeah, for sure. Power Pulse has one pump now. I guess... I mean, if you already have two pumps, is it worth upgrading to go to a single pump? <clears throat> I could definitely see for some of the older bass boats or boats that don't have very big compartments, where that'd be nice. You buy that 10 inch. <clears throat> yeah, I wanted to ask him if he got 20% off rods. <laughs> or what his deal was. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> yeah, one pump makes maintenance easier, but is it, I mean, are you, if you have two pumps now, is there that many people that are going to upgrade to go to a single pump? Because what are you going to do with those two pumps? I can't imagine there's going to be people beating down the door buying used power pole pumps. Well, I have two pumps on my Raptors. I don't really have an issue. 
Yeah. I don't want to see MLF go away, Mike. I don't I don't mind if the BPT goes away. <clears throat> but when you think of MLF as a whole now that they bought FLW, I don't want to see the Toyotas go away. I don't want to see the BFLs go away. I don't want to see the you know all the tournament directors and hardworking staff that was FLW that got sucked into this through the acquisition go away. So I'm always careful about my words. I'm not really anti-MLF. I'm, I am not definitely not a a Boyd fan, and I'm definitely not a super big fan of most of the stuff the BPT has done and that they continue to do. Um, more so on the like they keep just trying to go head to head with Bassmaster, putting Red Crest the week before the classic. It just seems childish. If they would just focus on their own products, I could get behind it, but it doesn't seem like five years after the split, they're willing to let this, you know, you know this contest of like who's who's the top dog let it go and uh i don't think they're gonna win that i have not tried the gravel dog i have not seen one in person <laughs> um i mean i on my garmin mount the 34, you can switch to perspective. I am thinking about getting one of those like fish obsessed mounts to make it a little quicker. Um, I should have played around with it yesterday when I was crappie fishing. Yeah. Get rid of BBT, bring back the cups. Maybe bring elevate the invitationals again. Life is probably good. I agree. I mean, the EQs are already pretty nasty, even without the uh, invitational or the invitationals going away. Yeah, I mean, I think we'd all like to see BPT versus Bass, top 20, top 10, head to head, year end thing, but <clears throat> neither league is going to put that on so it'd have to be done by a third party so unless somebody like bass pro i mean honestly bass pro is probably one of the few people that would benefit and even have interest to do that because i mean you're gonna have to pay the guys to show up for that event they're not going to pay entry fees to do that um it would be cool to see i just don't see anybody i mean right you got to probably pay See top if we did 20 versus 20, that's 40 guys, five grand. So that like two hundred thousand dollars plus running it. So somebody probably has to put up a, a quarter mil to make that a, a thing <clears throat> or more. You see, I think even if they would just move the red crest back to the same time frame as the wood force wood cup, that'd be a big step for them. I did see that the hookup has the uh a squeaky dolphin ish. Buzz bait. There you go. Academy. I mean, we just had a no live scope tournament that had some bass and MLF guys in it. <clears throat> it just turned out to be a bed fishing event. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the key is like if they worked together but there is no interest in these leagues working together at this point heading to uh lacrosse to practice for the bfl april 20th good luck i will not be fishing that bfl because it's during the off limits of the uh, bass nation qualifier that i'll be fishing <laughs> Well, we just hit an hour. We're going to keep it short and sweet tonight. I got a fancy fishing video that I'll get out tomorrow. Probably have a wiggle wart video coming out soon. A couple other things. Uh, and probably won't see a stream until maybe next Sunday night. <laughs> you literally got here right at the end, Bass Assassin. Appreciate everybody that tuned in on a Sunday night. Uh, kind of short notice, but appreciate all you. As always, here to help you guys catch more big bass and suck less.